What does your life look like on your social media feed? Are you creating an unattainable and completely unrealistic picture of successful and happy life? Our guest, Larissa May, was only 20 years old when she realized that her glam shots were part of the problem of creating a culture that filters out pain, struggle, and vulnerability, which are the other half of the story, very important part of our whole human experience. I am Tai Chi. At 19, I was a superstar and I was lost inside. I left it all behind, switched continents and started all over. Years later, I found myself lost again, this time in the American dream. This is a story about awakening, about living the life you were created for, about going inward and discovering the joyous and purposeful person you and I are both meant to be. This is Waking Up in America. We're here at the beautiful O Gallery in Nashville with Larissa May, also known as Live Like Lars. <laughs> hey, welcome. Hi. So good to have you here. I'm, honestly, it's a pleasure. Okay, do you have the half the story? I the do. Hashtag? I do. We here we go. We need to show that. Okay, and everybody, make sure that you like half yeah. the story. So ha follow half the story on Instagram. And what you'll do is click the link in the bio. And you'll get half the story. And we'll tell you why is that important. All right, Larissa, describe yourself in three words. Quirky, <laughs> eccentric, and passionate. Awesome. Okay, so in your story, and we'll get into the what turns you, and, and this was, okay, 20, you were like yesterday, right? It was Literally. crazy. I mean, it was <laughs> essentially last spring, but took a little bit for me to act on it. You know, mm -hmm. I have a, a teenage son, and that's kind of what a lot of the teenage confusion starts. We, mm -hmm. We're growing into people that we think we are or right. should be. T take me into your head when you were in high school. Oh, absolutely. So when I was in high school, I went to St. Ignatius College Prep in Chicago. It was an absolutely incredible experience. However, when I was younger, I was an artist. I was born, you know, by the time I was 14, I was in 18 musicals and I had a little business card when I was 10 years old, always trying to create and produce. However, I neglected all of that because I thought that I had to be someone else. I thought that I had to fit inside a box. And mm -hmm. because of that, at prep school, you know, I hit a low during my sophomore year where I tried to do every AP, I tried to join every club, and I tried to be perfect so that I could get into the perfect school to get the perfect job and to live the perfect life. And a lot of that was perpetuated by social media and, you know, I think it kind of dictated a lot of what I thought my college life had to be like. And, you know, those additional pressures, ironically, put me into a place where I wasn't happy at all. And it was a result of that that I figured out how to get back into my artistic space and use social media in a positive way rather than become a victim of it. Yes, and one thing that we need to make clear is that social media is now your new social environment. Right. right? It's your living room, it's your party, it's your right. street where you go and play with other kids. It really is. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean now, nowadays, at least my, you know, my little sister, she's in high school, she'll respond to a Snapchat faster than a text message or a phone call or anything. So it's insane because social media has the power to take one thing and spark spread it around the world and that can be a good thing or a bad thing so I think you know what I've seen is social media is not good or bad it's only half the story and yes. if we share the good half and the human part then it can be a great thing and connect people around the world yes and you yourself fell into the trap mm -hmm. of shaping your life around absolutely. the expectations absolutely and coming to college I think this is something that everyone can relate to is the freshman year, you almost start to create friend groups via social media. And I remember going through the roommate search and looking at girls' Facebook, and it was extremely intimidating. And, you know, people are picking roommates off of who's prettiest, who's skinniest, who's this and that. And it's a really terrifying world that, you know, social media really allows you to create a version of yourself, and that's the first impression. And so that was, you know, I think that's a moment that everyone deals with. And when you get to college, you know, there was a girl that wrote about half the story, and she said, hey, I go to this school, freshman year, I used to sit behind my computer and look at everyone's social media stories on nights that I felt extremely alone. And it's crazy because so many people feel that way. It's so natural to leave your high school and you're away from your parents, your friends, everything. It's not gonna be this seamless fit and social media does a great job of making it look like that. But ironically, the more that we try to perpetuate this perfect lifestyle, the more that people feel disconnected. Absolutely, I mean, we are the part of the problem. So take me, now you're in Vandal Van right. Woods and you starting to go back to art. Absolutely, so I got to Vanderbilt and I had my freshman year, it was great. I went out, it was a very social time. 
And then that summer, after freshman year, I went to Los Angeles for an internship. I had a PR internship. I got there when I was 18. I didn't know anyone, and I didn't have a car. I had this janky bike that I bought with my dad. I think the chain fell off probably every week. <laughs> and, you know, it was in that moment that I was confronted with a huge challenge. I mean, A, how do I meet friends? B, who am I when there's no one else around me telling me who I am? And C, what am I going to do with that? So it was during that time that I realized, you know, I was an artist, you know, for the first time in a while, I took a moment to stop and listen instead of talk or, you know, aspire to be something I wasn't. And so I used social media to find other artists and blogger groups. And then that's how I found my home because I mm -hmm. followed the passion, not the person. Right. And that's when I realized that if you use social media for the passion, then you find the people. It's not finding the people and then the passion. Oh, wow. So you did some listening, it sounds like. And we'll get into that when we come back. We're talking to Larissa May, the founder of the Half the Story Half. Project. <laughs> We're back talking to Larissa May, the founder of Half the Story. Um, thank you so much for being here and really helping us to understand really how hard it is for young people to, it's already hard as a teenager to know who you are and what defines you. And now you have this whole element of social media. It's hard for my generation. We look at other moms and you know, other wives that look perfect and we're missing that vulnerability. And what, um, so, so you're in LA, it sounds like you listened, you listened to the voice inside that said what? I listened and heard that I was the same person that I was when I was little, and I just got distracted by trying to be someone that I wasn't. So I think that obviously in life there are enough distractions, and now as a result of social media, it's disrupting all generations. You know, I know that my mom's age, they are always on Facebook and looking at everyone else's wives and you know it's like I work she doesn't they don't work you know what I mean and it's, it's difficult because everyone's trying to be perfect but it's not possible and in the college world you know everyone's posting what they're doing 10% of their time so that's going <laughs> out or going on vacations but no one's posting what they're doing 90% of their time and that's their intellectual pursuits that's their charities you know those are the things that make them move those are the things that make them tick and those are the things that make us human and yet you have a a, a fashion blog, I a do. lifestyle blog. I do. Okay, so tell me about that. So I started my fashion blog, Living Like Lars, as a way to get back into my Your life art. and really who I was and my art. And that was my voice and my way of creative expression. And it was interesting because in the beginning when I started using social media to share my heart and my passion, that was vulnerable. And most people think that vulnerability has to be something depressing, but vulnerability can be something that makes you happy because other people don't support it. And I remember I would shoot photos outside the Vanderbilt library. I remember going on street corners, packing a little bag and trying to do like three photos and three outfits in one day on the street corner. and. I got so much criticism and people would say, oh, like, haha, I'm living like Lars. I remember like seeing tweets of people making fun of me or people talking about it because I wasn't going down the traditional path. And it wasn't easy, but what I realized is that if you use social media to inspire people, then it's a good thing. So when I started doing that on Facebook, I received a message from a girl who is now my assistant. I'd never met her before, and she, you know, she said to me, "Hey, you don't, I don't, I know you don't know me, but I've seen some of your posts, and I just want to let you know that what you do inspires me, and I just want to get to know you." So we went mm, out one night beautiful. and had an inspiration feast, and at a place called Feast in Chicago, and I remember just writing down and helping her find her purpose and it was you know life's not about the destination it's about the journey you're so right about vulnerability when right. you show up with courage wholeheartedly right. it's scary because we are like you said uh, running into the danger the risk of being criticized right. in one thing that matters a lot to us so you had the turning point in a place where most of young women and ladies and girls dream about. Right. <laughs> and I know that a lot of people will say, oh, you're crazy. How can that be a bottom? But Half the story. I know. <laughs> So tell me about it. Well, it was September of New York Fashion Week this year. It was 80 degrees. I was covering for Lookbook and AOL Lifestyles. I was running from the Betsy Johnson show to AOL because DVF was giving a build speech. Now. DVF, Diane von Furstenberg, is the queen of fashion, literally yes. the queen. And I had 15 minutes to get from Penn Station to 16th and Broadway. And if I didn't get there, it would have been 
I mean, if there's a front row seat in front of DVF that's missing, that's one of the biggest mistakes you can make in your career, especially as a 20 year old, when you're given that opportunity. So I got on the subway, I got lost. I had eight minutes, I was running, I was wearing a double denim outfit, face planted, broke my phone, made it there in the nick of time, was literally wiping sweat off my face, but later that day proceeded to post a picture that I'd shot from, with a photographer from a major street magazine. And I realized, you know, this is only half the story. People don't see me staying up till 3 a.m. They don't see me Skyping into class during Starbucks. They don't, you know, the, I always joke. I mean, the only two meals that I had were when I would eat rats walking down the street or at two o'clock in the morning when I would order Seamless. And that was only half the story. And so the more I was getting into my career and the more connected I was becoming, the more disconnected I was with the yes. people around me. And people would say, oh, your life isn't real. This is crazy. This is that. It's like, well, I'm choosing myself to be shown that way. And when I woke up and realized this is only half the story and people are misunderstanding art as reality and there is no problem with creating art, but art is inspired by reality. So sometimes you got to take a moment and just be like, hey, this is me and this is how I relate to you. Yes, plus we are, you know, by doing that, we are then creating the expectation that everything comes easy, that right. the life with glam, glamour comes naturally, that some of us are just blessed. Right, with this. hashtag blessed. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Which is, I mean, it is. Those are beautiful moments. Right. But you're so right. And I mm -hmm. thank you so much to show it. It's it, there's hard work. There's s sacrifice and and um, there's dedication. And there's who who are you in this whole right. thing? Because I know that you are not just the beautiful picture. There's soul deep within. And when we come back, we'll talk to Larissa about that. What's behind her projects, her glam shots, the other half the story. If you feel stuck in your life right now and would like to create your own turning point, learn how these episodes and the stories of guests featured here can help you. In my book, Turning Points, I break it all down for you and I offer some guidance in the interactive sections at the end of each chapter. Visit wakingupprevolution.com to purchase a signed copy or download an ebook at amazon.com. We're here with Larissa May, the founder of Half the Story. And our Half the Story <laughs> today is that we're in this beautiful old gallery in Marathon Village, and we love the art, it's just so inspiring, but with this comes stuff like sounds from above. <laughs> so <laughs> that's our Half the Story, the other Half the Story. All right, Larissa, thank you for, for bringing us into this world that is privileged, it's blessed, and it's part of setting up an example that most of us can't really achieve, can't attain. And, and then it just creates a lot of a sense of my life is not as good. My life is not as pretty. I am not as pretty. You know, I am nobody. Nobody loves me. So tell me, tell me how this project, this mm -hmm. Half the Story project, change, changes that from your perspective. Half the story allows the story to be about you and not about what you're doing, not about what you're buying, not about what you're eating, not about where you're working out. It's about you and who you are as a person, removing all of that. Half the story is about the passion and what you see inside your soul. And you know, it's like I was saying earlier, what makes you tick? Is it that you volunteer at the Special Olympics every week? Is it that you dream to be an entrepreneur? Is it that you are super, that you're extremely passionate about you know, eating disorders because you suffered from one? And those are all things that unite us, yet mm. so many times we're, we feel so inadequate because we're posting the curated moments that divide us. And that's what it's all about. That's so beautifully put. Thank you. You know, all of the, my show is about turning points. My concept is that once you awaken, once you are willing to show up with courage and vulnerability, then you connect with others. Mm -hmm. And then we change the world. We change the culture. Would you agree? I agree. And I mean, that's why I'm doing this. My favorite thing about being an artist is not necessarily being there making the art, but bringing two people together that wouldn't have met to make something beautiful. And that's the point of this project is that you can take two people who didn't even know each other that have a common ground to make something or to connect. And that is the power of social media. And I encourage people to use half the story to do that and to connect and to use this as a platform to do them. Yes, beautiful. So now take us back. So you're sitting in the front row 
a DVF mm -hmm. show, mm -hmm. and you you know that this is going to change, right. right? What was the first thing that you actually practically did? I thought about it, and I was so that was the first thing, a thought. The second thing was I was in a photo project, a black and white photo project, and what I decided to do was create some type of physical replication of what half the story would be. And I thought about it and thought about it and figured out, you know, I love the project that I created. However, I wanted to make it on a larger scale. In order to do that, I had to make it digitally. So then I went to one of my professors and asked her if I could have this as an independent study and actually make this a course at Vanderbilt so that I can make a di bigger difference in the world rather than just be focused on the textbook in front of me. Mm. Did, you, did you come to any resistance? This is the one thing I've done in the past four years where I have not received criticism. Uh. The people that used to turn their head the other way are the ones that are asking me questions. And that's how I know that this is powerful. Why do you think that is? Because people who would criticize or not understand my art or my fashion, and they don't have to, understand half the story. Because humans and vulnerability and the constant feeling of inadequacy because of the constant exposure to someone that's better than you, smarter than you, prettier than you, or faster than you, is destroying us every single day. Yes, and you mentioned earlier something, you know, listening mm. and being heard. Right. I feel that half the story allows us to be heard, to tell a story that nobody really wants to hear. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and you know, it. It's a pain, it could be a pain or it could be an experience mm -hmm. or yes. an aspiration or a dream. And, and, and this is the point of half the story. Everyone has been talking about, oh, social media is bad, social media is good. You should be more authentic on, on social media. But the, the reality of life is, if you're alone, it, it's so much harder to do something. But if you have a group of people around you, then you can do it. So half the story is the support group for people to do this and you know take this arbitrary thought and make it a reality and also something cool because it's cool to be like, hey, I shared my half the story. I'm a real person and I'm just not, you know, I can admit that I'm not perfect or that I have a passion that I'm not trying to fit inside this little box. Yes, do you have <laughs> one story that? Yeah, I do. Actually, one of the girls that's working on the project with me found this artist and she's a student in New York and she creates a series of art based off of an eating disorder that she once had and she felt so connected to our project and was so excited that we shared her art on our platform and was just it just crazy inspired and one day she texted me and said hey you know tonight I had a bowl of pasta with my mom and my mom was like what happened to you you know I haven't seen you do this in forever and she was like text the half the story girl and you know Dar Dara was like it's half the story and it was it was so crazy to me it, it was insane and then you know it's moments like those that make you realize that something that comes from your heart can heal someone else and it connects with people of all ages I mean another amazing experience is going back to my high school and there's a little girl that absolutely loves our project. She's texting me every day and she, it, it's just unbelievable to think that something I've created helps someone else find purpose. And when you can do that, there's no other more fulfilling thing in the world. Yes, that's where true success lies. When we come back, we have more fun stuff talking to Larissa May. Are you planning a live event? Looking to bring inspiration and a fresh approach to wake up your community or organization? Tai Chi's keynote concerts are transformational experiences that lead your audience to a life of joy, authenticity, courage, and purpose. Book Tai Chi for your next event now by visiting wakinguprevolution.com. We're here with Larissa May, and now it's time for One Word Answers. You ready? Uh-oh, let's go. <laughs> okay, what makes you feel most awakened? Music. Your biggest challenge? Not losing things. <laughs> biggest fear? Losing passion. Ooh, your favorite treat? Sour watermelons. Ooh, yummy. <laughs> Most grateful for? The people around me. What's the last picture you took on your phone? Of my shoes. Ooh, I believe? In Nashville. All that our world need is? Passion. If I could abolish anything from the earth, it would be? Haters. Blue or orange? Orange. Ocean or mountains? Ocean. Lion or eagle? Lion. House or an apartment? Apartment. Fly or drive? Fly. Summer or winter? Summer. Dress or pants? Dress. <laughs> and this year you claim? To wake up every single day, do what I love, and help other, people's do what, other people do what they want to do. Wow, thank no, you. No, wait, just kidding. Ah. <laughs> this year, I want to help cool people do cool things. Awesome.
A viewer had this question for you. Does the fear of being criticized, of stepping out into vulnerability ever subside? I think it does, um, because half the story is, you know, it's a statement. It's a per personal statement at first, but also then it becomes a moment. And there, are, you know, I've had a lot of people say, oh, I had a half the story moment where my flight got delayed and I lost my bags and now I only have one outfit for my work weekend. So I think that it's definitely an evolution. First, it's like, hey, I stand for half the story and now I'm going to talk about it in my social media moving forward. And I have a question. Mm -hmm. What about when people get addicted to the, to the number of likes? Oh, gosh. Measure your life through love, not likes. That's what I say. I mean, I think it's easy to get caught up in and... I think it's also hard to say don't think about that because the younger generation, I know that my little sisters and her friends, they'll delete photos if they don't get the amount of likes that they have or the likes that they want. So I think that it's, you know, if you like a photo and you're sharing it because of your heart, you're not going to be concerned about the number of people that like it. It's a lonely world. It is. And so would you say that physical uh, friendships are still as important as Social media? Oh, 1,000%. I think that you can use social media to meet friends, but they're not, social media is not a way to keep them. Yes. And it's the one-on-one -on -one time, especially when you work in the arts and the industries, it's you know taking that time to call your friend, taking that time to have coffee, whether that's 30 minutes you know, once a week or 30 minutes every two months. That's what it's about. It's about the face-to-face -face time and really creating that real human connection. And speaking of friends, Tell me about the friend that's going to do song. My best friend, Julia Cole. She is going to sing half the story tonight. We met the first, the first week of freshman year. People told me that I should meet her, and I went up and knocked on her door and said, hey, I'm Lars. I heard we should meet, and we've been best friends ever since. So I'm really looking forward to you guys. She's amazing, and she wrote this song, Half the Story. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you. She wipes her tears and keeps her calm And rocks high heels like nothing's wrong But it hurts, it hurts A oh, broken heart to be that strong It looks like she's doing just fine Join the Waking Up Revolution by showing up as a whole person on your social media. Go to Half the Story on Instagram and like it, and also share your Half the Story next time you post your glam shots. 
and join us at wakingupprevolution.com to share this episode on social media and populate the social media with some good stuff. Also, you can support us by logging on to patreon.com backslash waking up and pledge a monthly contribution. You'll receive perks and backstage footage and all kinds of good stuff. Till next time, thank you so much for watching. I'm Olga Alexeyeva. I'm the artist and owner of O Gallery. This episode was filmed at my studio at Marathon Village, Nashville. Please visit us at ogalleryart.com. Thank you.